Hello to all the meeps and bubbles and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included. My name is Luma and today we are going to build that monstrosity right there. As this will be the main focus of the episode, there will be no plans for the day segment right here. Before we start the game, let's quickly recap what happened in the last episode. As you can see, we built a transit tube access point hub underneath our solar panel pyramid in the space biome. We stressed Rowan into binge eating, as you can see he is not very happy. You can even see Bird being worried for him. We built this tiny setup to create mutated seeds. And fitting to that, the botanical analyzer. We rearranged some stuff in the base, like the massage room, as well as the transit tubes, placed the slicksters down here, created a couple of vacuums, and recycled all the water that was in our bug refinery setup. Now it is in our infinite storage. The glass forge got rearranged, and most importantly, we built a rocket. By the way, what the heck? What is this doing there? It has been a long time since we got some algae, so why not? Hey guys, before I build the thing that will power our base the next couple hundred of cycles, I want some nafta. Therefore, we will need a nafta melter. The original design that my build is based on is from Tyra LPL from the Discord server. So check it out on the screen right now. So let's start right away. There will be a door, but since the door always starts closed, the heat would be transferred too quickly. So we start with the automation. First automation wire made out of steel from here to... Here. Then we will need something that detects the heat. Therefore, a thermosensor made out of gold right here. I want a buffer in between the magma heat source and where we want to melt the plastic. So I'm going to place some metal tiles in this U-form. The U-form will then get filled with a bottle emptier and a tiny amount of water. Now we uh, just skip ahead and let the duplicates fill this. I already prepared some materials right here, so the duplicates have access to that. Let's take a quick look what materials the duplicants used. They used the iron that was lying around and 40 degrees. I was worried that they used the iron that is lying here with 217 degrees so the water would flash instantly to steam and ruin our pretty vacuum. So since they used the right iron there's no problem. Now we wait for the bottle empty to be built and this to be filled with water. Now we can keep on going with our build. We need one more metal tile to close this off. We can set the thermal sensor to the melting point of the plastic. So let's check that right now. Melting point of plastic is around 160 degrees. So we can set this to around 200 degrees. If below 200 open door, no, if above 200 open the door, then we will need something that transfers the heat. I'm just going to use granite because we have time uh, like this some temp shift plates. I'm going to build them out of iron, one here and one right in the middle. After that we will need some conveyor stuff. First the conveyor loader so the lubricants can deliver the plastic that we want. A conveyor bridge right here, another bridge that goes like this. Connect up the conveys and here in a, in a loop or we make it even smaller like this. That should be enough. The material for the conveyor stuff doesn't really matter because it only will be at 200 degrees. In order to catch the nafta, I will place down some insulation tiles right here, so the heat doesn't get transferred from our buffer. I want it to be this big, so we can place a ladder system right here and a pitcher pump right next to it, so the duplicants have access to the nafta. The pitcher pump shouldn't be made out of sandstone, but a material that is laying around, like granite. These are made out of granite too, fine. Time for the duplicants to build that thing. Nice, the melter is almost done. Now we just have to add the door made out of steel. Place it right there and hook everything up to the power grid. Ah, copper cable, no. Steel cable for this piece and maybe one safety piece. And then we use copper wire. We can hook it up like this and snake it around to the same system. Look what we got, Muckroot. Also Nicola, great at ranching. Interesting, maybe it is time for another rancher. So Nicola, welcome to the base and don't drop my frames. Hi Nicola, let's give you a schedule and priorities. Nicola is gonna be our rancher dupe with a skill in ranching. Well, next time. First, farming. Nicola is gonna be in our last schedule because we don't have a rancher dupe there right now. For Nicola's bed, I'm going to move the lamp one over and transfer Frankie right here to the right. In case you're new to this let's play, Frankie and Jean need light to sleep, otherwise they are afraid of the dark. This will cause them to fall asleep during the day in the most unpleasant situations. Look at this, bird is actually finishing something. Nice. Door immediately closed because the temperature isn't ready yet. So the heat transfer will start. 
200 degrees. This will take a while to even out. So until the water reaches the temperature, it will still heat up. Let's give it a couple seconds. The water flashed to steam and now it will stop at 200 degrees Celsius. It took a little bit of time to even out the temperature, but now we can let the dupes deliver some plastic. One important thing, if you want your duplicates to deliver something to the conveyor loader, press the allow manual use button and now you have a lot of duplicates delivering stuff. Okay, that should be enough now, so we can deactivate the allow manual use and this will take a while. When all the plastic is melted, we will have a puddle right here and we can suck it up if we want to. Right now it is at 203 degrees and the plastic is increasing in temperature slowly, very slowly. Okay guys, now to the juicy bits. First we will need a little space. So I'm placing some letters made out of granite right here. Oh shit, what is this? No, neutronium. Ah, oh, this is ruining my... Ah. Let's see, maybe it is okay. Let's see what we can do about the skill points so the duplicates are a little bit faster. We have Turner here, Critter Rancher, so better Critter Ranching for you Turner. Stinky, Stinky could be super duper hot digging. Nisbet is a Critter Rancher, so better Critter Ranching and improved carrying. Jean, woo, that is a boost. Jean gets improved carrying, this, this and exosuit training as well as construction. Harold, better digging for you. Gosman, better construction. Ellie, maybe like this. Also construction and construction. Oh here you can see we got a little nafta already. 97 kilograms, 60, 24. Nice. A little bit of coal. Not useful but better than the duplicates right now. We have enough of them. While we are here why not improve the base? I got some comments from you to close the doors so the duplicates have less pathfinding and it will give back maybe one or two FPS. Now that the duplicates are skilled up, they are pretty fast at getting rid of all the material that is down here. Almost everything has been excavated. <laughs> Did you see him level up while he was sneezing? I needed just a little bit more space, so we have to wait till the duplicates are finished with this. Hey guys, the reed fiber to repair our exosuits is getting a little bit thin because the reed fiber source that we had before here has the wrong temperature. As you can see here it is only 21.6 degrees but it needs 22 till 37 degrees celsius. Also this is way too cold. So I scouted out a place with the optimal temperature range and now we can place down the farm tiles or the, the hydrophonic farm so we can supply it with water automatically. I think two tiles is enough and we can deconstruct those levels. Then we just need to hook it up to our water, which could be more of a challenge than anything else. As you can see, it is a little bit filled with pipes. There's no way around this. I could reroute this and place the pipe right here, or I just use another place. Yeah, I think I use another place. This is too complicated. So I found another placement right here. The temperature is around 35 degrees, that's enough. Almost too hot, but still good. So we can place down the hydrophonic farm tiles here and hook it up to the water, which we have right here. Not this, could you not? Now we can place in the reed fiber. The nafta production is looking good too and the nafta is at 164 degrees celsius. There we go. I guess now we have enough space. In order to have our dupes not get idle again, I will dig up some space up here so we can see what is to the right of the base. Oh, the end. Why not? So what are we gonna do right here? Did you see my short about a volcano material extractor? Gonna be exactly that. Because we have one, two, maybe three volcanoes, also a lot of magma and I think we can get a lot of energy out of that. The magma storage will be around here. Yes, that is too high for this volcano and for this volcano, but we have the glitch pump so we can throw our magma anywhere where we want. We don't have to rely on height differences. 
Let's start the build. The magma collection chamber will be made out of obsidian because we don't want the insulation tiles to melt. The rest of the insulation will be made out of igneous rock because we don't have enough ceramic for that yet. I want to have a triple steam turbine set up. So one, two, three steam turbines. Then we need to place down the wall as well as the wall for the other side. The middle needs to stay free. The top right room will be a little bit different, but the bottom floors are mirrored. Counting from the middle wall, we need 16 tiles. So I'm going to add one more tile to the right. Let's quickly check that. Okay, for the next room you will need a little bit more space and another steam turbine room on top of that. Also the insulation up here needs to be out of obsidian. Let's not build these walls for now so the duplicates have better access. In the background you can see the duplicates finishing the task and taking a whole cycle to finish the first layer of the project. So what do we have here? More hatches. That is nice. We could have more eggshells, more eggshells, more steel. The next step in the construction are the steam turbines. So we need space for that and can get rid of the ladders. Quickly let the duplicates remove the ladders and place down the steam turbines. Oh wait, I wanted to build them out of iron. Did I use copper again? Iron, iron, iron. They use copper here. No. Okay, let's see. Those things will need power and they need to be connected to our grid. Let's use the standard heavy watt wire. Oh, maybe it is the better choice to just use the heavy watt conductive wire. I placed down the heavy watt conductive wire not because of the energy it may hold, but because we had more material for that. I'm giving Nicola a little bit more to do because he is idle a lot and I hate this pop-up symbol. For the next step we will need a little bit of automation and the shipping equipment. So everything that we are using right now will be built out of steel. First the weight plate, then the auto sweeper. The auto sweeper has to be able to reach the spot above the weight plate. Then for safety precautions, it shouldn't activate even once, but you never know, one of those robo miners. Maybe the game lags and too much magma drops down and we have a tile forming there. To power the conveyor shutoffs, we only need a small amount of power, so we can use a regular wire and not a big ones. Therefore we can build a power transformer made out of steel right here in the steam room. After that, the machinery can be connected up with a heavy watt conductive wire. The floor in the steel room is going to be made out of metal tiles. We only have iron in abundance, so we are going to use that. The metal tiles are important for heat transfer with the aqua tuners. Now we can place down the aqua tuners. I guess for this amount of steam turbines, we will need about three. Press O to rotate the aqua tuners and place them down like this. The rest of the room can be filled with insulation tiles. Then we can place down the liquid thermal sensors between the aqua tuners. Later they will be the deciding factor on how much our coolant is cooled down. The conveyor loader, made out of steel, can be placed down right here. I don't think it matters for the conveyor rails, but I made the ones in the steam room out of steel. Then we can place down the most important temp shift blade, made out of iron. An important note from the future, I missed a couple of temp shift blades here, so I had to go and fix that later. After the duplicates, might I add very slowly, finally finished building the aqua tuners, I placed down the heavy watt conductive wire right around our contraption and closed off the magma tiles to the right. Those duplicates are so slow, I need to make more things at the same time. Let's build the insulation tiles and the radiant tiles too. I'm going to make them out of igneous rock because it doesn't really matter. This needs to be dropped in the steam room, which will end up here. Same thing. Oh, these are turned around. No, just this one is wrong. <laughs> this needs to be dropped on top of our conveyor. Question here, can this be copper or will this melt? Probably will not melt, but you could never be too sure. So maybe we build it out of steel. The next step is building the cooling loop for the steam turbines. The cooling loop starts at the aqua tuners and goes over every single steam turbine. There we will have to place down at least one radiant tiles, but I'm going with three made out of iron. And then we can just connect it up with the insulation pipes in a snake formation like this. After placing pipe segments over every single steam turbine, this next pipe segment will cool the batteries and I'm going to build it out of granite. Then we bring back the pipe and close the loop. Yes, finally new seats. Awesome. So I'm going to rip out this bluff briar and one of those. Replace them with the jumping joyous seats and I'm going to place them here. 
Ooh, the top base duplicants have done a great work. So what do we have here? A cold biome. Oh yeah, more of this mixed hydrogen and chlorine stuff. A couple of Sweetles. Nice. Here we are almost two cycles later and the duplicants still not finished. Let's give them a little bit more to do. I want a floor made out of granite right here. So we can place the batteries right on top of that. Also, I want the duplicants to build this quicker. Here, one more layer of obsidian. While the duplicants are being slow, I could semi-automate our ceramic production. So why not do that right now? We need one auto sweeper where it can reach everything. It needs to be hooked up to the power, wherever our power is, I guess down here. Two kilns and two storage bins. Can this reach it? Yes, it can reach it. Maybe better here. Bird is idle again. That is unacceptable. So bird, do something and dig this up. Now we can set this to coal, consumable ore, coal, 2000 should be enough. And we can set this to clay. And it should be four times higher than the coal, so 8000. Then we can set this to ceramic, forever, copy the settings, change the priorities, this a little bit higher than this. And now it should be semi-automatic. Maybe make this uh, a very low priority, so the duplicants only do this when they have nothing to do. The conveyors can be placed down. First we will need a conveyor thermo sensor and a conveyor shutoff right behind that. We do that on both sides and then place on the conveyor rail. After that we want to bring in the material from the conveyor rail on top and distribute it even to the left and to the right. Therefore we need some bridges. The first bridges are so the material cycles inside the conveyor rails and the second bridges are there so the material can be delivered to the closed loop. I'm not going to use the bridges here because it's too much material for me. I don't have that much copper left and I want to use it for other stuff. Now we can place down the electrical wires. Everything will be made out of copper except the one tile that is touching the power transformer. That is steel. As you can see I already started the tedious task of filling in the metal tiles on the top left. Seriously dupes. Oh okay, that tile melted. I could have thought of that. Well, let's not repeat that. Oh man. And yes, I know, I made them out of igneous rock so they could melt eventually. But the heat transfer between a liquid and a solid insulation tile is practically zero. Aww. Very annoying. We got three lazy dupes that are idle again. So I'm placing a couple more build orders. This is basically just for the duplicants that are not allowed in the Atmos suit so they have something to do while the other dupes are working on our project. The metal tiles are progressing slowly and I replace the ladder system with a ladder system made out of obsidian. Another tiny plug slug or more seeds. I'm always for the seeds. As you know, I love my plants. Also the plants are a good indicator for temperature. This plant needs 20 to 50 degrees Celsius and this needs 10 to 30. So it gives us a range of 20 to 30 degrees Celsius where both plants grow. So if the plants get red, we know that something is wrong with the temperature. Because I didn't build it in layers, the duplicants took forever to place down the one metal tile at a time. So I'm deconstructing those rows and then construct the metal tiles in a faster way. Let's jump ahead in time a little bit and then keep on going with the aqua tuners. Okay, for the piping, I want the pipe to go over the liquid pipe thermo sensor into the white. So if the temperature is right, we can bridge it off. Otherwise, go into the next aqua tuner, but check the temperature first. If the temperature is right, bridge it off. Same thing with the last aqua tuner. And if the temperature is wrong three times, we could either send it back and cool it down to the right temperature or just feed it back into the system. I guess that's alright too. After that, we can close off the cooling loop and connect it up like this. After that has been taken care of, we can take a look at the filter gates. Place them right here, made of the right material, not this one, and wait for them to be built. Nice, more copper. We need that. Also good, the nafta has been cooked and now we can pump it up whenever we need it. Yes, finally, the duplicants finished the metal tiles, now we can build the insulation again and then keep on going with the project. We can also add some conveyors to the sides of the conveyor shutoffs. In case we ever want to add another floor to this build, we would need access to this conveyor, so better build that now, instead of later when the rooms are already filled with steam. One thing that I will add to our cooling loop is a overflow protection. This can easily be achieved by placing down two bridges connected from green to green and white to white. Here you can see me using two double bridges, just to be sure. 
Not really sure if we'll need the batteries in the future, but for now let's place them down right here. We did not have enough iron ore to build this, so I scouted out the area and found some copper ore instead. I changed them out for copper ones. The duplicates are being busy bees and digging up all the copper that we need to build our batteries down here in the magma biome. For the cooling I will need some polluted water, so why not get it from here? Can I get it without the polluted oxygen escaping? Let's see. First we need access to power. As you can see, I hooked up this cable to our old system, just broke through the walls and now we have power from here, accessible here. Then I'm just going to eyeball an entrance, smack down some deodorizers and doors and that should be fine. A small space for the water to pull up and pump up and then break through the wall to the water. The pump has to be hooked up to the mechanical filter system for liquids, so the infinite storage can be filled with the polluted water. How can we have so many idle dupes and still no one building this cable? Okay, the pump needs to be hooked up first here and secondly to the power grid. Like this. <laughs> a couple of omelets. And a meep. Huh. No, no more dupes. We have idle dupes already. Omelets. Okay, now we can fill this with a little bit of water. This is 45 degrees, okay, so the water won't evaporate instantly. Let's place a bottle emptier on the edges. Here we can place a bottle emptier right on top. I skipped ahead a little bit to the point where the duplicates finished building the bottle emptiers. Okay, let's quickly check the temperatures again, so there is no surprise for us. 45 degrees, everything is cold, cold, no steam danger here, a little bit hotter, everything cold. Oh, 200 degree, this would have been fatal. This would have produced steam instantly, so we have to deconstruct that first before we drop the water in there. Right. Stop being idle, stinky, stop being lazy. How about we dig up everything that is here to the right, so we can have another power shaft to the right. Maybe that helps that the dupes are not lazy anymore. The pump is working hard. So we can drop in more water for later. Also, gold amalgam. Useful. Too much free time means idle loops, so I'm placing a larger digging order. Yeah, maybe I saved this biome because of the sweetles. No sweetles were harmed. I'm going to add a wall made out of obsidian right here, so I can drop the water from on top, place a tile here, the water will flow in there, and I'm closing it off. Why I'm using obsidian right here? First, because of the magma. And second, you can see the material, the abyssalite, is over 1000 degrees. So that means as soon as I drop some water, it would evaporate if I don't replace those tiles. Okay, the walls have been built. Now I can fill this one with water. 200 kilograms as well. But first we need to place down a tile right here. But there are the ladders and the cables, so we need to deconstruct them first. Let's print in glass. Not sure how useful that is. Maybe it could be of use on the other planetoid. Let's just print it there, you never know. Nice, the duplicates finally built this tile out of material that is not super hot. So we can drop in the water here as well. Also the duplicates built this tile and it is 35 degrees, so we can drop in some water there too. Nice, 200 kilograms. We can deactivate this one for now and then place a tile right here. No, right here. Insulation tile made of igneous rock. Do that now. 200 kilograms, nice. Okay, now we are at 400 kilograms. Drop the water here. <laughs> and I placed some stickers here. <laughs> nice, that's enough now. Also, we can set the filter gates to two seconds. Now we can set the value for the sensors. The temperature that we are putting in right here is heavily dependent on what coolant we want to use. We are going to use polluted water so we can put it to minus 5 degrees. Future me here, that was a dumb idea because you also have to consider what liquid you have underneath your steam turbines. Okay, they built the tile so we can drop in the water here too. They did that, oh, almost. <laughs> almost got me there, ghost man. Now the insulation tile here. Mop that up, deconstruct that, rebuild this. Nice. Thank you, Gosman. That was quick work. <laughs> no, not so nice. Almost got me there. First build this. Oh man. We can drop a little bit more water in the first one because this needs to suck up more heat. 
but it should get rid of the heat quicker. No, I want it like this. Oh, Frankie, you're still super slow. Do you have another skill point? Let's see, Frankie. Frankie has a lot of skill points now that he got a crit ranging. Amazing. How about you are better at constructing stuff? Nice. Dupes kept on building and deconstructing stuff. As you can see, they dropped down some water. Now we have steam down there. But for now we have enough material mass so it can suck up the heat, condensate the steam back to water and then the duplicants can mop it up. Super annoying. In the background you can see me placing priority yellow orders on the last remaining water bottles. And of course on the drop off points. Okay nice, everything but the bottles has settled so no more steam in here. And now we can drop something on the floor to cool down the batteries. I think I'm going with um, crude oil. Let's see, 9 kilograms, 100 grams. Nice, joyous seeds. Let's give the duplicants improved carrying so they can carry more stuff at once. Gene, you're finally being useful. Wow. Mechatronics engineer, there it is. Okay, we finally have enough of the crude oil down here so we can deconstruct those, take the material out and close this off. And then I think we need to collect some magma, do the automation and then we can start up that thing. Also we need two drop shoots, uh, one here and one right here. In the background you can see me preparing the automation as well as another conveyor loader for additional functionality. I think we can deactivate our electrolyzer now. <laughs> you can see 1600 kilograms of oxygen and we can save on a little bit of water. Ooh, more swills, nice. What's print in? Fungal spore, okay. Okay guys, I've added a little bit of stuff to our contraption right here. Let me explain. First I added the possibility for us to use hot material that is laying all around, here for example, in our contraption. The material will get delivered to this room, then sent off to the left and to the right, cooled down, the heat will get used as power and the material will get dropped at around 130, 135 degrees Celsius. Which is pretty nice, so we can extract the heat from the material and use it for power. Secondly, I added the automation, which is necessary to run that thing. This is the automation. Let me switch to the other mode. This may look a little bit complicated at first, but it's super simple. It just says that if there is liquid or debris in here, don't activate the door. Because the magma that would fall down would liquefy the debris again, or we would have two tiles of liquid, which we don't want. So only if there is no liquid or no debris, activate the door. Also, the door will only get activated if certain criteria for the timing are met. For now, we set the value to 1.2 seconds green and 300 seconds red. We chose those values for two reasons. First, 1.2 seconds. If there is no power, the door is so slow that no magma will drop down. But if it is powered, it will be enough to drop the right amount which we want. It's around less than 1400 kilograms, so no tile will form, but only debris. And the red value, this is a very safe value, we can reduce that later, but for now I'm going with that just to test it out. So only if the criteria are met, no debris, no liquid, open the door for a very short time, then wait 300 seconds. And the last automation is for two different things. First, this could be hooked up to our base, so it symbolizes a, another backup system. So this whole thing only activates when the base needs it, or like just the manual switch, we activate it manually. And the third thing, here is a smart battery. So if the system is low on energy, please boot up so we still have enough energy to control the doors. That's what this does. So we have to set the smart battery to a value that makes sense. You can see those batteries are already filled because I hooked it up to our main power grid right here. The cable is running along here. I snaked it around and hooked it up to the main power grid. Meaning that the smart battery now can control the material extractor setup. Therefore we have to set it to a reasonable value. I'm going with 90 and 70 right here. So right now you can see it, it's a green signal, but that's just because of the manual switch. If we turn it off, we have a red signal because we have enough power. So the door is closed forever until the power runs so low that we will need the power. And then the system will start up. 
but we don't have magma in it right now so it can't start up uh, for any reason. The timing is set, those are set to below zero. Stop it right here, don't listen to me. This needs to be above zero for both of these because of the not gate and the end gate needs to be replaced with an or gate or can be ripped out completely and you just can put the two automation cables from the hydro sensor and the pressure plate together and connect them to the input part of the not gate. Then the door should only open if there is no liquid or material in there, the timing is right and we switch it on manually or our base needs some power. The reason why I put in crude oil here is because this is in a vacuum and we need to cool down the conveyor loader somehow. The cooling will come from the hot output water from the steam turbines which is at around 99 degrees and we have a radiant pipe here to transfer the heat into the crude oil. I already prepared the pipes, now we just have to connect them up. Nah, I forgot a couple of pipes here. <laughs> Good at that, checked. And here too. Here too, okay. After the duplicants will have built the pipes, we can fill the loop with some polluted water. The polluted water is able to withstand colder temperatures, so it won't freeze until minus 20 degrees, I guess. We still have water in there, so we don't want it to reach minus 20 degrees, but since those steam turbines will be running a lot of time, they will heat up and it shouldn't happen. Even if this freezes down, the temperature should rise quickly enough. Future me here, it did not. Okay, now let's hook this up. Wait a second. We don't need insulation pipes for that. We can just use the regular liquid pipes. That's faster to build and cheaper. Add a bridge to this side. I think we can at least uncover this volcano for now. So we will accumulate a little bit of magma. This door is just for safety measures. Come on, Harold. Harold, what is your problem? Not this again. Come on, Harold. Stop it. It seems the duplings have problems with doors and building right next to each other. Now we can analyze the volcano and see how often it will erupt. So, from what we can see right here, there will be 124 kilograms every second at magma temperature, every 64 seconds, but only every 12 hours. Well, that is not enough. We need to build our magma pump, probably. Also, we could use the hot materials to start up the system. Up in the base, we gave the duplicants a little bit more of busy work. Now we can fill the loop with the polluted water that we need for cooling. Let's see. We have the pipe right here, need to connect it up. So the pipe goes here. We can connect it up to this pipe right here. Cut this, cut the bridge, cut the bridge and connect it up to our polluted water from the infinite storage right here. So connect it up like this, cut this, cut this for safety and then wait. Harold is almost done researching. So let's see. The next activity will be in 12 cycles. I had a super easy idea to get some magma up here. First we need to clean this up and then we just place some bottle emptiers made out of obsidian right here. And we're going to pump up the magma from down here. Therefore we will get rid of the material, dig down a little bit and we're going to place the bottom part of the pitcher pump around here somewhere. Magma flows a couple of tiles, I guess it's around between 6 and 11, so we can measure that out and place some pumps here. The pressure from the magma shouldn't be enough so it floods everything, but you can never be too sure. So for now we get rid of all the material first and then dig up the stuff. Until the duplings are finished with whatever they're doing right now, we can uncover this volcano and dig up the material down here, connect it up to the magma biome so it can refill it from the top. Ah, one of those again. Okay, we can finally place down the pumps. Pitcher pumps made out of obsidian right here. They shouldn't touch the magma, so maybe one tile higher. Then we can dig this up. But first let's let's finish the pumps. For the coolant to be delivered, we just have to switch the pump inside of the infinite storage on and wait. I've just noticed something important. I set the liquid pipe thermal sensor to above 150 degrees so they don't activate while I am filling in the polluted water, as you can see here. The loop isn't filled yet and I don't want the aquatunus to run yet. Also, I've noticed something crucial. 
I forgot the temp shift plates behind the equity units, which is a fatal flaw. So we have to deconstruct this again, place them down, and um, they need to be submerged in water or the room needs to be filled with steam before they run constantly because they will break pretty soon. I have a space issue right here. The conveyor loader could be placed one tile higher and I could add one more metal tile right here so that the water stays there and the aqua humans don't break as soon. Let's see, Harold, thank you. Quick work from you. I placed down the conveyor loader one tile higher, rerouted the heavy watt conductive wire, placed another metal tile as well as a bottle emptier and then I'm planning on dropping in more water. In addition to that, the three missing temp shift plates were added in. Then we can set this to magma, enable auto bottling, copy the settings and the dupes should run down and get a magma. That's why you need a lot of magma first, because the door needs to heat up, otherwise you have some tiles forming there. Also, this here needs to heat up, that's why the robo miner is here in case we have too much material at once here forming not debris but forming a solid tile. That should not happen with our timing, but you never know. The dupes are making quick work out of the magma transport. This is how our setup looks right now and I think we can start it up. To start up the system we need to activate our timer to the right settings. Yes, so 1.2, 300, 0, 0. This doesn't have to be switched on as long as there is a green signal coming from our battery, which it is. And then we just have to wait for the sensor to activate the door. Then we wait for this room to become steam before we turn on the thermo equity units because they will heat up otherwise. This is set to all. So and now take a quick look at the clock, reset the timer, did not activate, reset the timer. Okay, because there is a red signal coming from the batteries, because the batteries are already full again. <laughs> because it is midday and on midday, on midday we have a lot of power coming in from the solar panels. So since the power is not an issue right now, we need to flip the switch and see what happens if the timer reaches green again, reset the timer. It activated but did not drop because magma forms tiles that are pretty large so this volume of the magma is still not enough to drop down. We need to wait a little bit longer for the magma to fill up and try this again. I'm going to reduce the size of this a little bit. Maybe I was a little bit too generous with the size of our magma storage at the moment. Let's see, just one more tile. This is at 460 kilograms. Should be enough to drop the magma down, but let's wait for this and then we activate it again. Let's see, we have 561 kilograms of magma. So if we switch this on right now by resetting the timer, the door should activate, magma should drop down, it should be below 1400 kilograms. Nice, it picked it up, slowly heating up the metal tiles, transporting the materials, the debris, to the different areas and slowly heating up the water. If this is cold enough, it will get dropped. So if it is below 140 degrees, at the moment it is cooling down. 150, 140, 138, dropping it down, slowly heating this up. This is steam now, but not hot enough for the generators yet. Here you can see it's slowly starting up. So I guess we can deactivate the signal switch now and let this run for itself. But I would much rather have this be steam before I go somewhere else and build something else because our aqua tuners are not running at the moment and our coolant is at 42 degrees. So let's deconstruct that bridge, place another bridge up here so the water gets recycled and deactivate our infinite storage. The bridge gets destroyed and the water should get recycled as soon as this bridge is built. Yes, all the water gets recycled. Beautiful. Back to our system. I'm going to waste a little bit of magma right now just to see if the system works fine. Let's reset it again, dropping down. So if I reset it now, it shouldn't activate, but it did. That is not good. I should have put this to above zero because I put in the not gate. Same here. So because there's liquid at the moment, it sends a green signal. This needs to be an OR gate, not an AND gate. Good that I noticed that right now. Let's wait for the magma to cool down. 900 kilograms, shouldn't form a tile. Heating up this, converting to debris, being transported here. Since this should be an OR gate, we don't need an OR gate at all. We could just deconstruct this and connect the automation wires right to this spot. So we can connect those, but this tile needs to be made out of steel. Connect those and then connect this up. This 
up. Okay, that should work too, I guess, but I want to deconstruct this. Is anyone coming to build this ape? Great. So let's see. Before I close this off again and make a mistake, let's see if this works. Switch that on. Reset the timer. This should drop some magma. And if I activate the timer again, it shouldn't drop some magma because this stops it. Let's see. Nice. That is exactly what should happen. Oh, let's test this. If I reset the timer right now, it shouldn't activate either. Yep because there was some debris on top of that. Now we can close this off again. And our system is running. Because our system is running now, we can set this to minus four degrees. Copy this over. And the cooling should start. Cooling, cooling, cooling. Four degrees. Let's check the temperature overlay. They should cool down pretty soon. Okay, let's see. We can deactivate those now. If you would want to run this all the time, you could set the red duration to a very low value because we have our stopping system working right here. So it would be the fastest way to transport and cool down your magma and turn it into debris. At the moment, we actually don't really need that much power, but I'm planning on building transit tube access points all over the place and they suck up a lot of power. What do we have here? Pincher Pepsi or some duplicate. I like the blue hair, by the way, Liam. Hey guys, I need to end this video for today, so here's a little preview of how the thing looks in around 5 cycles. Yes, the water froze. I've recorded around 10 more cycles, but this video was already too long, so sorry for that guys. If you like this build, I would be happy if you leave a like. So, how much power do we need? The answer is yes.